Sure. Ok. Je vais prendre. So, good morning, uh, everyone, and thank you for coming yet again. This is my third workshop. I always like to call these sessions workshops because I'm not a uh, professor. I don't like to give lectures. And my philosophy is always to work together to get ideas. So I like to think of myself as a mentor, change maker, to facilitate change and to act as a catalyst. So this title which is, oh sorry, what am I doing? <laughs> Can you put the title up again? Huh? Okay, it's future direction. It's not for me, really. I'm nobody to <laughs> suggest what the future direction is. I'm only going to spark off ideas to see what you all think as the future direction of this institute should be. Now, I don't see many. Uh, others here, but those of you who are involved with the institute in whatever way, have you ever thought what is the mission statement of IIT Kharagpur? Come on, some of you professors, can you tell me what, do you know what your mission statement is? Please, please contribute. Tell me what do you think it is. Or is there an official one? Is there an official one? No? There is. Yeah, but I know, but that not, not as broad as that. I mean, what you want to be in two years, five years, what, what is your aim? What is the aim of the institute? Surely you, you will know. <laughs> it's not, not given anywhere? It is. It is. Oh. But don't you think everyone should be aware of it so that they work together to that goal? You know, that, that is very important, you know, so that is straight away. I know that you unconsciously work towards that goal, but if it is in front of you all the time, I think you're more aware of it. The way I see it, from my distant view, I see the mission statement of RT Kharagpur should be to be the center of excellence in India for technological education. Would you agree with that? Center of excellence. And that, I don't know whether you are number one or not, reading some of the assessments from 
all these university rankings, sometimes IIT Kharagpur is quite low down, you know. It's not at the top. Among the IITs, some people say that among the different IITs, Kharagpur is not always number one. It is about three or four or five. You know, Delhi, Kanpur, Madras, sometimes higher than that. So if you look at these things, you've got to ask yourself, where do you want to be? And uh, why are you not there? What can you do to get there? Uh, do you not think these are valid, valid things to think about? Again, uh, I hope the management will watch this and see what they can pick up from it. What structure is there for, is there like a think tank or a group that looks at it? Pity that people who are involved are not here. Do you know if there is a structure or a system where people get together to think about these issues? If not, there should be. Do not feel there should be. And more participated. That means representing staff, academia, students as well. See, this is how an organization should work. This is my feeling. I don't know what your feeling is. Please give me feedback. I'm not giving a lecture. Please, I need discussion from you guys. Yes. This is a, like from IIT Bombay, IIT Bangalore, DIFR, oh. and I think one more institute. Hmm. So they basically, so they won't post like podcasts. Like is reality true? It's a very abstract kind of discussion. Yes. And then how the technology or the, the, the future of education will be in like 20 or 30 years. Oh. So they basically oh. come up with these abstract kind of discussions. Hmm. So what, I mean, my my, so my interaction with St. John happened because Mechanical engineering was invited in that moment. So it can be like an assignment yeah. for all of us that we, why can't we have a talk kind of a session yeah. amongst us in the, in the But process. again, like what I was saying in my previous sessions, it's okay for me to spark ideas, but at the end of the day, you need to take it forward, carry it forward. Otherwise, all talk and no, no action gets you nowhere, gets you nowhere in life. And I think that is a very big, uh, you know, Weakness, I find in many systems, not just here, but even abroad you find it. Uh, so getting that motivation to create things, make change happen, be a change maker, that is very important. Someone has got to take the initiative. And in a place like this where everyone is educated and all that, I don't know why there is lacking. Professor Monty, can you s suggest something? Uh, you've got a lot of experience of many universities both here and abroad. Why do you think that is? Well, the key is involvement. Yes. How do you get involvement? And it can be done from the top down. Mm. You have a wider participation. Yes. And the top person to encourage participation yeah. mm. and ask questions. Yes. And normally in India, what we do is to take what we are to us. It's mm. okay. Director says so, we do this. Mm. And we say, okay, is that the best thing to do right now? Mm. So, uh, my advice would be, suggestion would be, that people should always question. Mm. I, I'm taking 20 courses, why? Mm. How much of that I use in mm. my time, six years ago? Mm. We took lots of courses. Mm. Now, has it that you could ask a question about mm. why I'm taking this course, what relevance it has. Mm. So, uh, what we should try to achieve is empower the students mm. to ask questions, mm. not be. So, who should them. be doing that? At what level of the management do you think director, I mean, director is not here, I don't want to malign his name. You know, some leadership action must be taken. It should be a charismatic person who will say, you know, let us meet together, talk about these things. Do you not feel that is something that can be done? It will help to spark off the change. Please, let us have your views. Yeah, actually, we, we look at it, uh, mostly we are uh, working in the, that level. Yes. In the department, uh, individual academic level. Yes. So if you look at uh, the structure here, uh, so basically it is a... Uh, uh, Director and his <coughs> deans. Mm. So that is most of a, a central, oh. central kind of thing. Mm. And these academic units are like states. Oh. Okay. 
So uh, uh, basically, they work together in tandem. Mm. So we mostly look at it from department. So we do mm. not know. Uh, we know something about what is happening yeah. in the leadership, how they take decision. So definitely, director, deputy director, mm. uh, those deans, they. But do you think that there is much uh, or not enough involvement at lower levels to filter down? Uh, I cannot say exactly. At mm. department level, where we act, there is enough interaction. Okay. All right. Because so some, um, someone should enthuse all the levels to get involvement. Otherwise, change does not happen. I wish this feedback would get to the management, you know. The message I've sir, been giving the last two sessions that those of you who attended all the... Sir, maybe oops. there is some miscommunication here. We have uh, another head and deans committee. Okay. So, director and mm. academic deans, mm. the deputy director, they interact in, mm. interact uh, with them. Oh. And then we are also have a senate meeting okay. happening, yeah. uh, you know, at yeah. certain intervals. Oh. Where all the professors, okay. senior management, senior people, mm. they uh, interact, they meet, okay. and uh, so then they take it to the department, oh. and then the middle rank, like associate professor, prof mm. assistant professor, and something related to the student also, okay. that that has that goes uh, to the student, yeah. to faculty advisor or okay. course coordinator. Yeah. Right. Uh, professor Puriyana was coming from a meeting where. We were discussing okay. about one new course that has been introduced yeah. after curriculum yeah. revision. Mm. So how the module should be okay. delivered Good. and Good. the involved yeah. faculty who will take which responsibility. Yeah. So yeah. these are this is happening, mm. but uh, you know uh, maybe top leadership can tell you give it more mm. you know give mm. better answer uh, yeah. compared to us. Yeah. We are in the somewhat yeah. in the middle <laughs> in the department level, okay. but these are there. Okay. The and Beans uh, committee are there. Yeah. Say the yes, sir. Uh, I was a professor yeah. here many years ago. And I was also involved in the faculty senate. And I was involved in the director for the and various activities. There has been a communication gap all the time. Really? Oh. Always. Why is that? Because the low level people they think it's that they have any importance to say anything about. No involvement. And there is no uh, culture to extract those ideas from the bottom to the yeah. That was that time. Mm -hmm. So they, they think they evolved in that sense that uh, it was a top down approach. Yeah. There was no flow from bottom to mm -hmm. that time. Yeah. I don't know how it's going to be now. And uh, students have no role really. I was a student also here. Mm. No role. Nobody asked me how, how do you feel about this course. Mm. What do you think? No, there was no assessment. Mm. There was no assessment for the courses at that mm. time. Now I don't know. Mm. Like in US, when I when I teach, an assessment by right. the students about the faculty, feedback, about the faculty, about the course, about the way mm. it was conducted in the class, and the assessment by every faculty. Mm. So faculty members are quite conscious that hey, mm. I will do a good job. Mm. Otherwise, nothing will happen to me the same, but I will back through the information system. Mm. So this top-down, bottom-up approach should be there. Yeah. In that case, things will evolve. Yeah. Please don't for a moment think that I'm here criticizing the system. As I say, that is not my culture. That is not my mindset. I like to think of myself, I think in, if you see the social media, many people pick me up as a change maker. And to be change maker, it is to facilitate change. Um, so I hope that some of these things will be noted so that there can be change coming about from it. It's for the general uh, benefit and well-being. You notice that my very first workshop was about well-being. See. IIT is not just a place where you learn and do mugging. It is to build up your personality and your life for the future. So 
the all-rounded wellness. We were just talking, was it yesterday? That why do you call it, what is that center called? Center for? No, no, the, not that one. The uh, student uh, welfare, what is that called? Counseling center. Is it called the counseling center? Now, why do you call it counseling center? Someone suggested counseling center will put people off. They don't want to go there because that gives the image that they are failures, you know. Why don't you just call it wellness center? Or rather than have it in separate building, why don't you have it in a gymkhana where everyone can get involved, go there, you know, feel free to go to gymkhana, to go to wellness center and express your problems there rather than go to counseling center. Simple things, a lot of change can be made by simple things. They don't need a lot of money. It just needs action and good ideas. Do you not agree? So these are little things that can be done to affect change. So I hope someone is taking notes and convey these ideas, please, uh, so that the general well-being of the whole campus can be you know, enhanced. So that is hopefully my message today. Uh, and I always like to say that it's not just the top management staff, but it's the student population and also the support staff, you know, all the other support staff, the menial staff, they should all be involved. The total population of the campus should be involved. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay, so much for that other side. Now, for the future, we were talking yesterday about climate change and sustainability. These are the so-called sexy subjects or topics which are capturing the attention of the world. And I don't know how much IT Kharpo is involved in that. Perhaps you should now have, you may be already doing that, but in a roundabout way, have a dedicated sort of department for climate change, sustainability, and integrate all the other disciplines and skills to form this sort of thing. I was talking to Professor Paul yes, just yesterday about his center of excellence where his type of engineering involves every discipline. It's not just a mechanical, electrical, or whatever. And even the human disciplines, you know, the non-technical stuff, emotions and all that, because he's trying to get your computers to read the mind waves to transmit it into uh, something which can be analyzed. So the, I was asking him, teasing him, you can probably just design a bonsai by capturing my mind waves and transferring it to the computer and design it. So the futuristic scenario of these possibilities are there. So how exciting is that? So the future courses and things, I'm sure there must be some people thinking about the future courses, future direction. No longer should it be st the old 60 years ago, civil, mechanical, electrical. You know, these new directions should be there. And the rate of change in the world is so fast that in one year, even two years, you can be left completely behind. And if you don't act now, you will definitely be left behind. So if IIT Kharpo wants to be advancing, you should be thinking about these things, doing these things, be the first and do it well. And with all the wealth of alumnus you have, you can ask them, tap on them, just to give just simple advice like that will help. And don't feel shy to collaborate with other IITs, other institutions, other universities, not just in India, but worldwide to do it. I know it's some of it is happening, but perhaps not enough. So those new courses, new ideas, some ideas about these things from you, audience. Can I have some participation, feedback from you? Surely you've got it in your mind, but you're just too shy to speak. Yes. 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 Very good. Very good. What should it be now? So do you think that's a good idea or it should be just a study thing or should we have to focus on becoming number one in technology? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. The life and world is more than that. You are looking at a total person, totality. Just to be a technocrat is not sufficient. 
you know, you're just a oh, genius, but uh, uh, the world is much more than that. You know, there's a total human being. And I think you have the capacity to do that. And uh, if you can combine the technology into wellness, you'll be setting some new um, uh, paths, you know, for people to follow. See, the possibilities are enormous, don't you think? Absolutely enormous in this field where technology and all these things come together. So I'm glad you mentioned that. You should review that. You should never be the same. It should never be the same. If you stick to the same thing, you will stuck in a rut forever. I tell you, I don't like to keep harping. I'm 82 years of age. And although my company has been going 37 years, uh, for many years, we kept doing the same thing. And we suddenly realized that we were being left behind because there's e-commerce. And I grew up in the age of steam. My wife knew more about computers than I did. Can you imagine? I didn't know what a computer was in 1990. She taught me how to use it. And she was only a secretary, stenographer. <laughs> uh, and then a few years back, about seven or eight years back, I realized that unless I have an e-commerce business, I will not survive. So I had to learn from scratch how to do all these things. And now we are OK. We've left other people behind in my very small niche sector. We are best because we have a strong e-commerce business. So things like that, you've got to constantly evolve and change if you are to survive. Just survival, not just success. Just to survive, you've got to do these things. So to be aware of this, and of course, in this day and age, where there is so much social media and all this stuff, you can just a click of a button, look at your phone, you can find out whatever is going on in the world. There is no excuse not to know what is going on in the world. So it is so easy to tap into these things. But the thing is to act on it and to create the change. This is what change making is all about. Uh, so any other ideas, please? You know? Yes, sir. at this moment from Excel, Excel plan for rapid transition mm. because our existing, as you said, mechanical, electrical, civil and all these branches, it will not uh, survive. It will yeah. not survive in future, yeah. but it will not change in a day. Yes. So, but we need some action plan for rapid transition yes. to ac accept the future. Mm. And for that, what is essential, not a new center, but a virtual transdisciplinary work groups. Yes, my God, what a brilliant. In that, yes. what immediately, say for example, the business is the main thing. The people, our new generation, they need to earn with the implementation of technology, giving a future sustainability. Mm. For that, we require something, even if we have a virtual work group for the mm. eco uh, tourism for uh, sustainable tourism. Mm. That because where our thing should be there, business and money flow will be there. Application of artificial intelligence or machine learning will be coming. That how exactly mm. new technology for transport, new technology yeah. for uh, the site development, new architecture for uh, this uh, landform design. Mm. So for those, our present existing civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, or mining engineering will not be able to provide it. Mm. So the curriculum of all these engineering need to take a rapid transition mm. action plan. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, people can see it, but how do you transform and make the change? But you suggested this uh, committee or group or something. Uh, do you think it will create the change? I th you need yes, to. I feel that the thing is that for that, our mindset needs to be ready. Oh. And the mindset, if we think of that there will be some directions, there will be giving something, then some people will be working on it, no oh. So that we need to bring this a uh, rapid action plan, yeah. and that will have to be coming from the our young generation teachers. Yeah. So the young generation teachers, they need to know exactly what teaching and learning is. Oh. But do you feel that you are a lone voice here, or are there other people with the ideas but cannot uh, communicate it to the, uh, what you call it, powers that be, to create the change. You know, that is the thing, crucial. In India, I just bring up. Huh? In India, overall in the country, oh. the ideas will not be 
be coming on the who idea generates. Oh. But it is where the idea who will be managing. Oh. And the managing of ideas is always not taking that how the idea gets generated. Mm. So the whole overall the system, it is having some sort of a uh, bottleneck. Mm. And that bottleneck is, I feel that when there will be tremendous pressure, just like I'm from a uh, riverside area, I have seen when the river pressure increases, it just... Bust the dam. <laughs> yes, so that's why I think the waves will be coming up. Oh. The rapid changes will be there, but unfortunately, here the rapid changes also will be slow. Yeah. My God, what an interesting description. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I had two points to say. Uh, the first point is when IITs were established by the government of India, it was based on the design of MIT. Mm. They thought that we'll mm. create an institution that mm. will be like MIT yes, of course. in USA. Mm. Uh, so on that basis, they wanted to first create a, a, a center of excellence in engineering yes. and then further diversify it in different fields. Mm. So uh, one more point that I'd like to add is uh, if we see the interdisciplinary study across India, then IIT Kharagpur stands at second rank in the amount of paper that it publishes in interdisciplinary study. Mm. Even I am also working in uh, two branches which are interdisciplinary. Mm. So my main stream is electrical, but with the help of professors, mm. I am working on quantum and neuroscience together. Mm. So. Okay. Yeah, so there is a lot of scope, there is a lot of changes that is happening in our yes. institute. And as far, uh, from my perspective, I have seen many people who are working in this interdisciplinary field. Okay. So that will become a feature, no doubt, across yeah. the whole IIT, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Everything will be integrated. Everything will be integrated. In fact, sir, uh, there is a center called ATDC. Uh -huh. The main purpose was to combine different field of studies, that is oh. mechanical, civil... I wish I had that in my days, because I think I told in the previous two workshops, when I entered IIT in 58, I wanted to do, or I opted for electrical engineering because my father was one. And Professor said told me that was the worst possible reason. But then he wouldn't let me change, they wouldn't let me change. I wanted to be, do architecture because I'm artistic by nature. And that would, did not happen, I wish it had happened. But you will find your own solution later in life, which I did. But I, I can see your point, you know, it is so vital, especially in our days where uh, you, if you go out in the world, you can't just rely on one skill. Whatever you've learned, you forget straight away. You've got to learn new things, absolutely new things. And the rate of change is happening so fast that um, it is even more essential. Um, yes, sir, any other point to say? You're bursting to speak, are you? <laughs> <laughs> what about our guest from East Africa? Can can you say something? What? My my feeling is that we are really geared heavily toward undergraduate education. Okay. And that actually takes away a lot of time and energy for a typical teacher, and we should be concentrating, for example, teaching only one course and focus on research, because if you see the output. People have been putting mm. papers being cited yeah. and so on. But I know from personal experience, mm. when I'm handling two or three courses, it's not easy for me to also be up to date with uh, literature, mm. attending conferences and so on and so forth, which is exactly where I pick up new knowledge mm. or furthering. Yes. This is actually a, an issue which is really, it's not a problem with administration and like that. We are short of resources. Mm. We are short of faculty time. Yeah. There's not enough people to handle the classes. Mm. And teachers love teaching. So researchers also, they also love interacting with students mm. and so on. And that's actually draining away, I would say, what really is, uh, shall I say, the overall output. Yeah. That's so another area that I haven't quite touched on yet. Uh, I don't like to say it. When I went to RK Hall the other day, I saw in the E block three, four people sharing one room in such bad condition. That was really bad. Uh, it's unacceptable. It shouldn't be acceptable here. This is uh, a temporary. Yeah, I know, temporary, but whatever it is. This begs the issue of the wider numbers. Wider numbers of IIT. How many students are you going to take? Are you going to call a halt, you know, like 14,000, 15,000? Cut it off there. We can't expand anymore. 
at some point you must be able to come to some limit where that is the limit we cannot take on anymore. Create some other IITs, but at least the other IITs should have staff to staff them. So is there any thinking along those lines as to the you know, ultimate numbers that IIT Kharagpur should have? We do not assess our bearing capacity. <laughs> Why is that? It is exactly their uh, infrastructure <laughs> goes with the, on the whim. Of the government? Until we know how to say no, oh. then we cannot do it. And here exactly all this thing has uh, crossed the bearing capacity because people do not have here the capacity and the courage to say no. Oh. So we, this, we have to understand the power of no. Yes. Yeah, very true. Yes, sir. Are you saying something? Uh, sir, like due to COVID, I mean, we came up with this new concept for hybrid. Yes. Like online and offline sessions. And oh. if you look at pre COVID, sir, Coursera, like the platforms are already existing. Yes. And they are pretty successful. Like University of Pennsylvania, University of Water, New Water and Auburn, they are already conducting online courses and they have been able to equip individuals with the right amount of education skill sets through online. Hmm. Which I think the IITs are also doing it in the in a sense that we have NPTEL courses, oh. which are being done by the faculty who are the experts in their, in their hmm. specific domain area. So, I mean, sir, sir, is it like that? Shall we go for the democratization of education? where higher institutions of higher capacity or institutes of learning can impart education for so students who are not so that fortunate mm. to come to the IIT or, or I think so. You've got to think radical. You've got to think radical. I don't want to boast about my own situation. My YouTube channel, which I have now half a million subscribers and I'm over 50 million views, has grown in only three years due to the COVID. Only it was pure accident. And I give all my information for free. I give it for free. I believe that knowledge should be a birthright, human birthright. It should not be something that you charge for. My competitors who are into bonsai, they charge for their knowledge. They charge, you join my course, you pay $100 for about two sessions or whatever, one session. But I give it completely free. And I'm not worried about it. I'm absolutely not worried about it because they enjoy it, they benefit from it. I'm leaving a mark, I'm benefiting mankind, benefiting a lot of other people. But it comes back to you in other ways, you know. I find that because I've given it free, I've, I've grown my uh, customer base just by chance. You know, whereas you got a few hundred bucks for teaching people, like this is free, I've got millions of people who are following me now. Because I gave it away free, so although you think you've given it free, it comes back in other ways. So don't worry about that. And I feel that what you've said is very pertinent. Why should it be denied? If someone is uh, bright enough to pick it up online, he should benefit from that. The whole country would benefit, whole society will benefit. So that is a concept we need to develop. You see, it needs people to really implement that sort of change and have that mindset uh, developed and spread across the country, it'll be a new first. After all, I still think the JE system is a bit unfair, you know, all these bright sparks getting. But there are so many people who didn't get in, who've got equally bright brains. You're wasting their talent, you know, they're being disappointed. Why can't you tap into that, you know, give that information free? So these are new concepts. What a brilliant uh, suggestion that is, you know. Do you not think that this is something that the country would benefit from. Yeah. So uh. We are CEOs, we are CXOs, we are CEO chief, uh, chief technology officers, chief information officers. So recently, sir, uh, Tata Steel, they, they started a new position called chief knowledge officer. Uh. So his sole job, his whole KPI is all basically connecting all the silos all the information, all the knowledge sharing which happened across the, the, the group of Tatas. Mm. So they came up with this concept of knowledge sharing where the person responsible is his only so his or her only job is basically to facilitate the, the sharing of knowledge which is already sitting in the silos. Mm. So that as a group or as a conglomerate, Tatas can benefit. 
So this is what I mean, like if we can replicate in someone mm. in a who are at least a bit of extent in IIT. Yes. Across the IIT, in fact the IIM systems also. Mm. So we can actually understand it that, I mean, that's what I think uh, my friend told me that mm. he is doing some work with... Interdisciplinary, yeah. Mm. So like these two particular domain areas can come, can come together and share ideas, we can have idea thoughts. Mm. And then, you know, people can take up those ideas, ideas can evolve, come to a, a particular tangible shape and then you can commercialize it or you can make some other venture or vertical object. Sure, sure. This is yeah. like, I mean, most of it basically kind of on the mind map, basically mm. kind of a thought, That's process, right. thought experiment you can say. Yeah. But how it will... Again, it this is the big problem, you know, as ideas is one thing, but how to translate it into action, how to facilitate, how to create change, the change makers, you need change makers, there's a special role. Perhaps there should be a department for change makers, you know, not department for <laughs> these uh, techno wizards. You know, the human element is so important in any organization. Yes. Over after this COVID yeah. educational scenario, oh. we have got here two basic things. That is, a technique is a lot of uh, low pressure created. Oh. That is, exactly uh, we do not have properly design that what to be taught in engineering. Mm. As a result, that is exactly the students sometimes they suffer from the supply of planting. Mm. That if they search Too something, much. so many things but wow. which is not at all. That's right. Because Relevant uh, or useful. Nowhere the teachers are of the curriculum is telling that this is the exactly doable expertise they are going to get from this. Mm. So because of the lack of that what is happening, our all curriculum is no design based. Oh. If a civil engineer come out to a civil engineer, he cannot design a building. If a mining engineer come out, he cannot design a mine. If a mechanical engineer come out, he design a particular gear. In that, exactly our engineering is becoming more engineering science. Mm. So, and to bring that practicality in the hybrid board, mm. it requires a different research on the teaching and learning process itself. Mm. So there we have to mm. think something that otherwise that what I tell about the rapid rapidization mm. of our change process mm. is also. So we need to do a little bit of more action plan yeah. towards bringing this hybrid system by designing our curriculum to the that is the befitting with the time. Mm. Otherwise our students will be still Absolutely. reading at a curriculum which is exactly will not be leading to them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Many of our curriculum courses, teachers are taking pride I am teaching it. Oh. Students are getting pride that I am getting excellent grade. Oh. But thing is that when you want to do something in the industry, I find that none of our in Indian power sector, Indian mining sector, Indian manufacturing sector, lacking engineers and depending on that only the some foreign uh, input for any little changes. Mm. Engineering institutes are away from that exactly curriculum development and curriculum changes take place without having any single input from the industry. Oh. So that exactly the total uh, failure of the curriculum review system. Mm. Unless and until we take it, then how can we exactly deliver and produce mm. tomorrow's engineer? Mm. Otherwise we will be pro pro producing some tomorrow's the scientists will be taking up that yeah. they're capable of learner. Yeah. Anybody who picks up, they will be working for them, not yeah. for our system or our country. Yeah. But again, this is where, you know, this comes back again to that question of change. How do you communicate your brilliant ideas to management to create the change, you know? Uh, it can be despairing, yes, sir. Oh. If you have C, you're not. <laughs> so, uh, but it's like, as you said before, there are many brilliant minds. Yeah. Maybe someone is really good in, uh, in uh, for any physics related, maths related. Mm. Someone is brilliant for arts. You cannot compare them, you cannot actually measure the same person with the same stick. Yes. It, it cannot be. So, but as you said, saying is true. Maybe not changing it, whatever is going to be difficult, but at least. Uh, they want the person who wants to be maybe a researcher that mm. is more like uh, simulation, like uh, maybe academically oriented, mm. not application wise. But in the industry sector, actually, when you go out, mm. you need to know what to do. If yeah. you 
Yeah, I think we touched on it very briefly the other day about the soft skills, you know. You should have, not just in the humanities department, but just have another session where people are taught these, what we call soft skills, how social skills, because when you go out into the world, you know, these things are very important, very, very important. Uh, one step can change yeah. this, this curriculum oh. if we can make it mandatory. Yes. That the BTEC project. Oh. Publicly and it should be available in the net. Because when, if an institution makes the BTEC project can be substituted by a coursework, that shows exactly we are not at all a design oriented and product oriented. Yes, Without absolutely. So brilliant. Engineer, so let IIT Kharagpur take a decision that all the BTEC projects will have to be internet and all the, all the world will be knowing. Yes. Then exactly those teachers who are just signing away with uh, guiding and BTEC <laughs> project will be coming. Uh, that so would be revolutionary. Does it happen at the moment? I don't know. My goodness, I wish you stayed longer. But there is such a wealth, wealth of yes. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Okay. So, do you find that we have touched on some interesting issues, raw issues, raw R A W raw? It is very sensitive issues, but the thing is really again how to communicate to people and how to create the change. Yes, sir. Uh, I venture to suggest the points made by the gentleman are absolutely right on the money. The thing is, we still have a lot of freedom. Mm. I, as an instructor, have complete freedom from calling in my oh. friends from the industry and get their input when I design the course. Okay. Good. The director or anyone who he tells me how to design. Really? It. Oh, that's very good. That 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 actually is uh, the culture of IIT. Okay. Culture of IIT teaching. So there, the only thing that actually lacking is the initiative from the from the instructor himself. If he wants to, he can visit industries, mm. which we have done. Oh. But not to the extent where it could impact the big project, for example. Mm. But there, we really require to not only reach out from this side, but also bring people from industry into our classrooms. How do you inculcate that sort of culture in the teachers? What am I saying is, Professor, uh, the working style here is quite different from how it is in the West. For example, a teacher, without ever going to the, when the blast furnace is running, he teaches metallurgy. Oh. He's never been close to a metal <laughs> blast person. Or a mechanical engineer, for example, he's not seen end-to-end -end fabrication of an automobile. He's not done that ever in his life. So he's closed in, and his reference is the textbook oh. or the video, yes. which is not at all enough and cannot be a substitute for real life action yet. And that is why our courses are like that. And we are like to start it by saying, I'm also about your business science-based education. I became a science-based engineer from another wow. IIT. But exactly the point was, we were focused on learning the fundas, and we stopped it. We didn't go into application. Huh. Yes. We did not actually go into application. But it's up to the instructor to do that. Mm. I will not say we have to wait for the whole system to change, and then we take care of this uh, the, the evolution mm. or whatever it is. It can be done by any instructor, and that freedom is there. Oh, okay. <coughs> Good. But not enough, you say? Not enough happening? No, it's not happening because the teachers don't have that orientation. Oh, I see. If there is some, I will say there is a way to tackle this. 
provide some incentive. Mm -hmm. As an example, in the management schools, in the top management schools, they provide some incentives for publishing a case or publishing a paper. They provide direct incentive. We could have a design, we could have a, uh, sort of a course design in such a way that the instructor himself has some incentive to bring in the practical know how or the mm -hmm. practical input. Mm -hmm. There should be some incentive provided, otherwise, action won't be there. Mm -hmm. There will be lip service, of course, but uh, it really will not make an impact on mm -hmm. what goes on in the class. Yeah. That's my feeling. Mm -hmm. We should not forget there are human beings, and they naturally they try to stay with their specialization and they try to sort of do the best that they can with the stuff that he has around him, which does not include input from industry. Yeah. So you made a very, very good point there. Yeah. But we do not have to wait for the whole institute to change or the, or the system to change. Mm -hmm. We'll put in certain things and we'll be the top class there. Yeah. I don't think we should dilute our fundamentals yeah. sure. or the orientation towards fundamentals. Yeah. That should be there. Mm. There should be, like everyone is saying, input from outside. Mm. Mm. Yes. If there's time. Yes. Uh, yes. I find, after taking 50 years of 60 years of work, that uh, we have a sharp discontinuity between science and engineering. We teach. Engineering degree to be superior to a science degree. Mm. So, for example, you get a MSc degree in science, but they can only get a BTEC in engineering, mm. which automatically assumes that science education is as good as engineering education. I can give you an example of the USA, for example. No matter what subject you take, you get the same degree, you get a BS. Mm. Get this BS in physics or chemistry or mechanical engineering. Okay. Uh, therefore, you assume that anybody who enters engineering is better qualified to engineer. Mm. They may be better qualified to be a philosopher. We don't value the non engineering areas as much as we should. Mm. Because, and in fact, if you look at the world rating of the university, IIT has some of the brightest students mm. by any standard. What is the ranking, world ranking of IIT? <laughs> Quite low. <laughs> Quite low. <laughs> Less than 500. Oh. Okay. Well, China has two in the top 20. Oh. Let us rating times high yeah. degree. China has some high year from and Beijing mm. are 15th and 14th. And why is that? Because I say this, of course, because I have quite a few Chinese students from China. Yeah. Right? Because they don't categorize anyone going to engineering being more capable of engineering. Yeah. So our system is geared to producing engineers who are not supposed to, who are not qualified to engineer. That's that means too much theory. Not theory. No, no, we don't teach theory. We, we it's road planning. Oh, I see. We don't teach theory. It's road planning. Oh. So, so you get a BS in in engineering, but you get you get a you get a BS in engineering, but a MSc in physics, as if physics are not as good yeah. as engineering. Is. <laughs> and that's the basic understanding. Yeah. That's why we don't produce any new inventions. Mm. And I could go on for hours on this, but. I just want to make a point that mm. we have to distinguish. We have to you do you think that the, is that one of the reasons why, when the Indian graduates go abroad, then they blossom yes. abroad? <laughs> yes, sir. No, no. You I, please. I do believe that it has something to do with the fertility because parents uh, need to train and that. But whenever you go outside, technically you should be in the middle of Mm. 
You mean they are not practical enough? Even if they are not practical. Because it's like they have all the knowledge and the moment they go there, maybe they just give it like they need to apply it or output the bit and then it's like the output is most of the time is one thing. That's what I have seen. Well, I don't know how the time is going. Are we? Okay. All right. Okay. This is such interesting lecture. I mean, that uh, dear lady at the back, I have not heard you speak. Would you like to say something, please? <laughs> speak up a bit louder. Yeah. Uh, sir, actually, I'm a very small part here. Yes. Are you having much success though? <laughs> uh, no, sir. Actually, we are, uh, we are working with the faculty members yes. and we are teaming up with the startups with the faculty members oh. to take an idea to its prototype stage. Mm. So, um, somehow the faculty members are like very much busy in their own research work. Yes. And that's where we are lagging. Yeah. I wish you were here yesterday. We were talking yesterday. Uh, the alumni office people were here. That means alumni office people should act as what we call marriage brokers. You know, get alumni who are prepared to invest hard cash <laughs> and uh, foreign currency with startup in expectation for getting return from whatever they invest. I'm sure someone is going to not gamble, but take a risk and uh, support these young startups. You know, would that sort of thing be useful? You know, so, so we talked. Uh, I hope they will take it up, alumni office will take it up, arrange these marriages with your young startups. There's so many alumnus who have got the money, got the ability abroad especially uh, to make it happen. The possibilities are great, absolutely great. Yes, sir. Yes. I am currently pursuing agriculture and food engineering. Okay. And my friend, uh, whose motto is also to start a startup, mm -hmm. but he can't start because he was doing agriculture. So uh, we think like, uh, as a student, the course uh, designed like that. If I want to start a startup, there should be a, a courses like how to start startup. If someone to want to go specialize in AI, yeah. So this step and adding to that the. This is 21st century, and what are the skills needed in 21st century? This will be taught in us in five years, so we will be will be a great leader in the corporate. And what the and the course curriculum we find it boring because we can't apply in the real world. The course curriculum uh, we talk with each other, we design like the way that we should think in the long term, like what should be the possibility in the uh, after 10 years, five years, and the curriculum will be uh, like that, so we will get interest. And mm -hmm. although we are getting uh, various startup courses and Okay, so I will I do you one online course because only 10 days ago, there is an organization in the Bombay, they've got the presidency this year, South Asia Bonsai Federation, because they know I'm a bonsai entrepreneur. I did a Zoom presentation for free for how to become an entrepreneur in bonsai in India. That Zoom conference, unfortunately, they didn't want to pay too much money. Only 100 participants were allowed. More than a thousand people wanted to join, <laughs> but they, it is available. Now, you know that video was taken from that one, that course. Uh, more than a thousand people wanted to join that, and it's all for free, all for free. And I got so much feedback from it. So this is the sort of thing, if people are prepared to share that information, exactly what you are, how to start your own business, whatever niche business you want to do, there is a way of doing it, you know, how to find the land, how to find the market, these sort of things can be taught, like you said. You know, if you can find people who are prepared to give that expertise through Zoom, you don't have to come to IIT to give the lecture, you know, give this sort of information on a course, it is very useful. Uh, so again, please, alumni office, make note of it, you know, try and organize people who are prepared to give up their time to do small Zoom conferences, online courses, podcasts, 
you would benefit from this. I'm sure you will. It's such a relevant point. Yes. Blocked. I it's not for me to give the answer. You no, see, I'm uh, suggesting it, but it it is a problem. You need to have these systems in place where that communication can go to the top management and implement change. Otherwise, change cannot take place. Change cannot take place. Uh, I don't know, you've got to be, have a groundswell of action, or action plan. Like you said, all you people get together and create that change. Change has to happen organically from within. As I say, my role here is just to spark off ideas. It's just to spark off ideas. If it has had any use, I hope that these ideas will become uh, actions that can be implemented. That is all I'm just saying. I hope you found these sessions useful for what little worth I am. I'm not a CEO of Google or Microsoft or anything. I'm only a humble Mali, but I'm quite successful in what I do. I believe in change and giving change and creating change. And uh, I think I have a little role to play, so I hope I've contributed something to your thinking and the mindset uh, of IIT. I don't know how much time we have. I hope you've benefited from this. It's only touching the surface, touching the surface. But you know, the, it is so deep that you can create wonders, possibilities. OK, with that, I don't think I will take up more of your time. But I hope some action will take place from this. OK. Thank you very much. I'll see you at lunch. Yes, that's very good. <laughs> I'll give you my car. I need to get in touch with you. Unfortunately, I have 200 cars in my suitcase. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> They're all lost. <laughs> I need to watch that uh, that uh, gym on one side. Okay, I will. Okay. Okay.